In today's episode, we're going to be talking about self-love as an ongoing evolution and a little bit into the hypocrisy of the body positivity movement. Here's the deal. We are not meant to stay the same forever. Self-love does not mean staying the same. Self-love is not this all or nothing concept. It's actually quite the opposite. And unconditional self-love is the not so glamorous stuff that magazines, TV, online influencers, they don't talk about these things. The body positivity movement, quite frankly, has gaslighted so many women into thinking that they don't need to work on themselves. They don't need to work on their own stuff and that it's wrong to want change, especially to want change as it relates to your body. And that right there, guys, is some toxic ass behavior and it needs to stop. And that's what we're going to be talking all about today. So if that sounds good, stick around and we're going to get all into it. So for those of you that have been here with me for a long time listening to the Irresistible You podcast, you know that I quite often talk about self-love. I also quite often talk about body positivity as in the body positivity movement and how I believe a lot of that, while maybe it may have had good intentions at some point, I believe wherever it has ended up over the last couple of years, I think it's really toxic. And I think it's toxic for a number of reasons. And Um, I'm going to dive a little bit into that on here, but there are some past episodes that you could go back and watch where I do talk a little bit more in depth around that. And one of the things that I think is just, you know, super toxic when it comes to this movement and something that when I look at the body positivity movement as a whole and I look at what self-love really means and I see the gap there. And In the body positivity movement, there's become this belief that, you know, you have to love yourself, meaning you have to love every single part and being of your body, and that it's not even okay to acknowledge that you want things to change. That if you want things to change, that means you're toxic. That means you're not positive. That means you're the problem. And I think, you know, at some point, it probably started out with some good intentions. And somewhere along the way, of course, you get extremists and anything that have completely diluted the message. And quite frankly, I think there's people that just don't understand. And I'm here to say that telling someone to love themselves, to love every single you know, crack and crevice of your body, that in and of itself is some toxic ass behavior itself. That's gaslighting. I don't have to love every roll, every piece of cellulite, every double chin, every like imperfection about me. I don't have to love those things in order to love me. I don't have to love my gut in order to love Amy, the being, the person, the human, right? Um, And I think that's where, you know, body positivity gets it wrong. And I am the type of person that just kind of, I beat to my own drum, (laughs) the beat of my own drum. I do what I do. I believe what I believe. And that's why I created Irresistible You to begin with. Irresistible You is about creating a life you crave, learning how to have an unconditional loving relationship with yourself, no matter where you are on the scale, no matter where you are in your body. But what it also means is that, you know, if I want to make changes to myself, if I want to make changes to my life, I and I only am empowered to make that decision. But I just want to also be very clear, and I and you guys know, my longtime listeners, you know this is a core belief of mine, is that when it does come to weight loss or any type of changing of your body, be it weight loss, plastic surgery, gastric bypass, whatever, you've got to come at that from a place of wanting it for yourself out of a place of self-love instead of out of a place of self-hatred. And I'm going to explain all of this and like break it down because I know it's overwhelming. I know it's confusing, but here's the bottom line. You get to do whatever the F you want to do. You don't need to fall. Like I see, 
I see people out in the online world that are in positions of influence, okay? And they feel like they have to fit into this bubble or they're, the people with the pitchforks are going to come for them. And at some point, you just have to decide that that doesn't matter and you're going to do what you're going to do, what's best for you, your life, and your body. And I, I'm not going to mention names. I don't want to say who this is, um, but, you know, keeping up with kind of like current events out in the influencer community, which I, first and foremost, I hate that word. I hate that term, but that's what they're called. That's what we're saying. There is really no other word for it at the moment, but I just, I that always makes my skin crawl. And I used to manage an influencer network, um, the education side of things. And I've always just, I just don't like that word. So um, there was a recent situation where an influencer who is promoting, you know, loving yourself, body positivity, she also has been on a recent weight loss journey. And there has been some rumors going around that, you know, she didn't lose, she hasn't lost all her weight. She's lost a little bit of weight on this journey. And there's been some rumors going around that part of this weight loss journey was not really her losing weight. And it was actually her getting some type of lipo or stomach surgery or something like that. And she never announced that. She never communicated that. And now it has come to light that she did in fact have a, a stomach surgery where she had her lower um, like gut roll, whatever that area, I don't know the scientific term we're talking about here, the lower part of her abdomen, she had it removed. And it's become this whole big thing, this whole big drama. And what really hurts my heart about this whole thing is how she is feeling the need to apologize, to apologize for a decision that she made about her body. That is what has me just it, it it makes my heart ache because that right there is where this hypocrisy completely comes into play and you know there's people on one side that are saying well that's not the problem the problem is she lied about it she didn't share about it and quite honestly it she doesn't owe anyone i don't care how much you share as a as a podcaster as a youtuber at the end of the day i don't owe any of you an explanation for everything that I do in my life. I love you guys. That's with all the love and respect, but I do not owe you an explanation for every little decision that I make in my life, big or small, especially when it comes to the decisions that you make between you and your doctor. Like there's a thing called HIPAA for a reason. And I can see where people might be, feel betrayed. I mean, they're being a little dramatic, I, I, I think, where they feel betrayed that this was someone who was like, love yourself, love your rolls, love your stomach. And then she went and had this thing removed. And I I feel like she's overcompensating with the apologies and with the reasons why. She doesn't owe that to them. She doesn't owe that to her followers. She doesn't owe that to her viewers. And, you know, this is where the hypocrisy really comes in is people say, love yourself, love your body, do whatever you want. But yet, if someone decides to make changes, they bring out the tomatoes and the pitchforks. And it's like, you're creating a movement that's about not judging your own body or not being judged for having the body that you have. But then when people make decisions for themselves, these people are out in the streets judging, judging, judging. And that is where this toxicity has come into play as it relates to the body positivity movement. And self-love, back to the, the, the title of this episode, Self-love is an evolution. Self-love doesn't mean, you know, I'm going to stay stagnant this way for the rest of my life. You know, and, and staying stagnant, as I said, doesn't mean, um, like, I have to stay at this size. I have to stay at this weight. I have to stay at this mindset. Self-love should be an ongoing evolution because that's what we do as human beings. We evolve. We learn. We, we, it, it, just like, I got to get my words together here, guys. We learn. And when we learn things, we get to make different decisions. 
Because once you have more information to work with, you get to make different decisions. And here's what I mean by that. Let's use weight as an example, right? So if someone is an online influencer who has kind of made their coin, made their bank on, you know, body positivity, love yourself at any size, and then at some point they decide this overweight body that I'm in is no longer serving me. I need to make some changes. That is actually self-love. It's self-love, and I'm going to be very clear about a couple of things here. You know, staying in a body that is making you physically, um, mis it's making you miserable physically, it's making you, you know, mentally just obsess about everything that's going on, it's making you not be able to do certain things, it is limiting your physical mobility, or it is affecting your, you know, your, your labs, it's affecting your body, it's affecting your health. Staying in a body because you saw that body positivity said, no, 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 you must love yourself no matter what and not make intentional changes. Staying like that would be the opposite of self-love. Staying in a body that is making you sick and miserable, literally, that is not self-love. And I am, am tired of seeing women being gaslighted into believing that everything is okay, just love yourself. Just love yourself and everything's going to be okay. That is bullshit. That is toxic. And that is not how this works. Self-love is not rainbows and butterflies and perfect, you know, everything is perfect and happy and joyful. And that is not what self-love is. Somewhere along the way, somebody got it twisted that that's what self-love is all about. And true, unconditional self-love is not rainbows and butterflies because all of that is what's called denial. And denial will never give you the life that you want. As long as you stay in denial that everything is okay, you're in for a rude awakening. Again, we've seen this with several, several plus-size influencers, whether they're Instagrammers, YouTubers, whatever. I have been in this space for over 10 years. Believe it or not, I was actually one of the first like fashion bloggers. I used to do like outfits of the day on my blog before Instagram, before all of that. And, you know, I have seen the evolution of some of these influencers that were quite overweight that at some point had surgery or went on a weight loss journey and lost a lot of the weight because I'm sure there were underlying health issues attached to that. You know, and, and that's the stuff nobody wants to talk about in the body positivity space. And here's, let me be very clear on my stance. And, and I think those of you that have been rocking with me for a while, you know, you know me, you know my heart, you know what I believe. But for those of you that might be new and just coming here for the first time, I wholeheartedly believe that you are deserving of the life you crave no matter what size you are. I wholeheartedly believe you should not wait for the weight to live the life that you crave, to live the life that you want. You know, but I also know that a lifetime of obesity, a lifetime of being overweight, it doesn't just have physical symptoms. There's so many emotional symptoms that come along with being the fat girl, being the fat friend, not being able to walk into a store and buy anything in your size, not being able to get on an airplane and sit in the seat correctly. There's a lot of things that come along with that. And for the, the body positivity movement as a whole to just gloss over that, that is a problem and that is toxic. Because true self-love is being able to have the hard conversations with yourself when it's time for you to make changes. And I don't believe that anybody should lose weight from a place of hating themselves. It should actually be the opposite. I believe anyone that wants to lose weight and change their body, it has to be done from self-love or it will never be long-lasting. 
And what's the difference? Let's talk about that. What's the difference of I hate myself and I want to change my body or I love myself enough to change my body? Because remember what I said at the beginning, I said, I can dislike the gut. I can dislike the, the gut going on, but I can still love Amy completely unconditionally. Okay. And let me explain what that means. So when I want to lose weight because I hate myself and I just am miserable and, 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 and all the things, it looks like me desperate dieting, which we talked about last week. It looks like me beating myself up with all the inner fat bitch talk. You fat bitch, you're so disgusting. I can't believe you look like that. Who do you think you are? Blah, 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 blah. It looks like the desperate diets. It looks like, you know, excessive working out. Um, it looks like, it looks like trying to find a quick fix because you just want instant gratification to get out of the body that you're in right now. And it looks like you wanting to do it because you're afraid of what other people think about you. Um, and you're just doing it for all the wrong reasons, okay? Where losing weight or changing your body from self-love looks like you loving yourself unconditionally enough to realize when you want to make changes for yourself. I want to lose weight so that I can live a longer life. I want to lose weight so that I can have more energy to play with my kids. I want to lose weight because I'm also ready to deal with my own shit. And when I say deal with your own shit, that's the emotional weight. That's a big topic that we talk about here. Because when you're losing weight from self-hatred, you're not dealing with the emotional weight. Remember how I said, when you've been overweight or obese most of your life, you have all these other issues emotionally that come along with it that nobody talks about in the diet world. Well, when you lose weight from hatred, you're not addressing the emotional weight. You're just not doing it. And so then you lose the weight or you have the bypass surgery or you have the loose skin surgery and you wonder, how come I feel the same? I might be down however many sizes, however many pounds, but I feel, I feel exactly the same. And there's a reason. It's because you didn't address the emotional weight. Losing weight from self-love is being able to have the hard conversations with yourself about, you know, why am I overeating in the first place? Why do I think it's okay to not keep promises to myself? Why am I not putting myself first? Why am I not treating myself with respect? I need to work on those things. Before I ever think about a meal plan and an exercise plan, because that's the easy stuff. That's the easy stuff. So losing weight from self-love is, is when you realize you want more than just a quick fix. You want to actually change your life. And where it gets all twisted up and, and, mut and muddled and everything else is the fact that you're hearing out here how, well, if you love yourself, you shouldn't need to change. You shouldn't want to change. And that is why so many people have not dealt with their stuff, their shit. They have not dealt with the emotional weight because they think, well, if I love myself, if I treat myself better, if I take pride in myself, then I'm not going to feel motivated to lose the weight because I'm only going to be motivated to lose the weight from a place of hating myself. I'm only going to be motivated to lose the weight from, you know, feeling absolutely, utterly miserable and punishing the, the body that I have now. And that's where things are completely twisted around. If you actually want to lose weight for the last time, then you're going to go from a place of self-love and, and instead of jumping out of desperation to the next meal plan or the next detox tea or the next Instagram waist trainer, you're going to actually say, okay, it's time to work on myself. It's time to work on the inner fat bitch talk that's going on up here. It's time to create a relationship with myself that does not revolve around food and laying my ass on the couch every day. That is self-love. Self-love is not this, oh, I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to like give myself positive affirmations and tell myself all these bullshit things that I don't believe. 
You don't take someone who hates themselves, who is miserable in their own skin, who has all this inner fat bitch chatter going on inside their head. You don't take someone like that, give them a meal plan and tell them everything's going to be okay. Just tell yourself you're beautiful. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. Um, and self-love, unconditional self-love is being able to do the things that I'm saying and also being able to look at yourself and saying, I would really like to change this if that's what you want. Because you get to make that decision because you want it, not because you feel pressured into it by society, you feel pressured into it by what you see on Instagram. You want to change something because you actually want to change it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with plastic surgery, with tummy tucks, with boob jobs, with it. You know what? It's available. I say go do it. As long as you're doing it from the right place, as long as you're doing it from the place of self-love and you're doing it from a place where you are working on your emotional weight so that you are able to emotionally handle those changes. Because any type of thing that you have done to your body, whether you lose 100 pounds in a year, 50 pounds in a year, you have stomach surgery, you know, stomach removal surgery, you have loose skin removal surgery, anything like that that you do to alter the body that you have been in for God knows how long, that is going to come with a shitstorm of feelings after, before, after, and during, especially after. If you have always been the fat girl, the fat friend, the whatever, when you have a procedure like this or you lose a ton of weight, if you haven't worked on the emotional weight, the true self-love, the non-glamorous self-love stuff, you are not going to be ready for what that brings. And that is why we see you lose a certain amount of pounds, you get to this certain number, and that number reminds you of something. How many of you have these emotional attachments to the number? When I was 190, I did this and I was on top of the world and I had this and I had that or this thing. Ha you have some kind of memory attached to that number. And so you get to a certain place and the weight comes back on because you haven't done the real work. You haven't done the real true work that is involved here. What kind of memories do you have attached to that? I would love to know. I would love to talk more about this with you guys. So again, this week, we are going to be doing the um, after the live after show on Tuesday, March 16th, 11 a.m. inside of the free Irresistible You podcast discussion group. All you have to do is request to join. It's totally free. I will be going live where you get to ask questions. You get to share. We get to talk more, dive deeper into this episode. So as you're listening, as you think of things or you um, have questions or you want to dive deeper on a topic, that is what those live shows are for. So make sure that you do not miss out. That is happening Tuesday, March 16th at 11 a.m. inside of the free group. Okay. Here's the bottom line. Okay, here's the bottom line. Self-love, true, hard, unconditional self-love means being able to discern between wanting something for yourself out of self-hatred versus self-love. That is true, true self-love, is being able to discern, I want this for myself because it's going to improve my quality of life. I want this for myself because I want to look better and I'm able to mentally and emotionally handle what comes along with that versus the person who's doing it out of desperation. They're not going to be able to handle that because that inner fat bitch that we talk about, she's still going to be there at your goal weight or at your heaviest weight. It depends on what you decide to do with that. If you, you have to learn how to handle that. And so making changes to your body, there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. When you are doing it from this place of self-love, and I am sick and tired of seeing the body positivity movement telling people that intentional weight loss is wrong. Intentional weight loss is not wrong. 
Intentional weight loss could save your damn life in more ways than one. And so we can't sit here and gloss over the fact that there are times when our weight has a direct correlation to our physical health and our mental health. And we have to deal with that shit. And sometimes just losing the weight isn't how we deal with the mental and emotional stuff. In fact, that's not how we deal with it. We deal with it by all the things that I'm talking about. Everything I preach on my podcast is how you deal with the emotional weight that comes with changing your body. And self-love, it's this evolution, guys. It's, it's, it's an evolution that is something that for the rest of your life, it's an evolution. It's just like we talk about with personal development. At some point, if you decide you're done, you don't want to learn anymore. You don't want to grow anymore. You might as well consider yourself dead because what's the point? The point of life is to keep growing and evolving and changing. And, you know, back to weight and body image, it's like, here's another great example, kind of in the opposite direction. Let's say, you know, you're at your heaviest weight and you decide, you know, um, so I, I'll just use me as an example, right? So I have, I'm on my postpartum weight loss journey at the moment. In my head, I've always told myself I really want to weigh between 150 to 160 just because I, as an adult, I never have. And I think that would actually even be really pushing it for me. So I don't know. But here's the thing. That's just a number that I made up that I threw out there. It doesn't mean anything. What if... Here's, here's the thing. What if I get to 190? I get back to 190 again and I decide I really like it here. I'm really happy here. I may not be, you know, and, and I have no intention of ever being skinny or thin, ever. That's never my goal again, ever, never. But what if I get there and I'm like, I actually like it here. But my, oh my God, the BMI chart, F the BMI chart. I can't stand the BMI chart. You know, but what if I get to 190 or whatever number that is, and I decide I really like it here, even though I had this plan of, oh, I'm going to get to 150 and blah, blah. What if that is where I want to land? That is okay. That is also okay. Because self-love, again, is being able to make the best decisions for yourself and being able to discern what do I really want for myself? Not what society wants for me, not what, you know, the, the followers want for me, not for what I, I have to do what's best for me. The same thing when you have someone who is overweight, you know, and there's, so, like I said, there's been so many influence where this, where this has happened and people just like come for them. I am always just shocked how these people that are also preaching body positivity, love yourself at any size, blah, 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 blah. And the person decides they want to lose weight. The person decides they need to have gastric bypass surgery. The person decides they need to have something tucked, sucked, or removed. And these people that were so supportive all of a sudden are coming for them. And I have a belief about that. I have a belief that those people that are coming for them have so much of their own bullshit to deal with, and that's part of the problem. They have their own emotional weight, their own inner fat bitch stuff that they really need to deal with, and that's part of their problem. So you can't worry about what other people are going to say, what other people are going to want. You have to do what's right for you because self-love is an evolution. Self-love does not mean I pick a number, I pick a body type, I pick this point in time in my life, and I, set, I put myself in a box, in a bubble, and I have to stay here. It's just like celebrities. Whenever people see celebrities that were overweight celebrities, they come for them. Um, there was a thing recently with Lizzo where she did some kind of like a detox and people lost their shit. They lost their shit because people are making these celebrities, influencers, role models, whatever. They are making this person, putting this person on some kind of unrealistic pedestal of like fatness and body positivity -ness, And it's like that person can never change. Because you know what it is? It's because the people are like, I don't want to change. 
I'm not ready to come out of my denial. I'm not ready to deal with my own shit. I'm not ready to acknowledge and admit that I have some stuff that needs to be worked on. And I'm not talking about weight. I'm talking about the emotional weight, the emotional baggage that comes with hating your body, that comes with being overweight your whole life. It's because those people are not ready to deal with their own stuff. So they come for these people that are making the best decisions for themselves, for their body, and no one has to give them permission to do that. <laughs> and no one needs to give you permission to make changes to your body. I would just hope that whatever changes you do decide to make, you are doing them from a place of self-love and not self-hatred and not out of desperation. Because I'll be very honest with you, like, your girl, me, I want to lose, you know, a good chunk of my weight and I do want to have some, like a mommy makeover. I've had two kids. I've been overweight since I was in elementary school. I want to have some stuff done and I don't want to have it done because I hate Amy. I don't want to have it done because I hate my body so much. I know I deserve that. I know what I deserve. I know I deserve to have a body that doesn't have loose skin because I've dealt with this my entire life. And no amount of exercise is going to get rid of a certain amount of that skin, if you know what I'm saying. So it's like, do you think I sit here? I love you guys. But do you think I sit here and worry about, oh, my God, what if someone's going to judge me? No, honestly, I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks. Don't care. It's my life, my body. I get to make that decision just like you do. And self-love doesn't mean that I have to love every single crevice and crack of my body. That's some fairy tale romanticized bullshit right there. I have done the work to be able to, again, discern between you fat piece of shit versus, you know what? So it's like I told you, like after the baby, it's like I could sit here and beat myself up, you fat piece of shit. I can't believe you gained 60 pounds. I can't believe your stomach is hanging. I can't believe you look like that. Who do you think you are? And, and just do everything out of hatred and desperation versus you had a baby. You gain the weight your body needed to gain. You have your son. You have your daughter. They are happy. They are healthy. They are here. And now you have as long as it takes for you to work on you and your body. And if that means getting something talked down the road, that's what it means. But it's because I want it because I deserve it. It doesn't mean I'm doing it because I'm desperate to look a certain way. You know, and, and <sighs> this, this living in denial that everything is okay, that is so dangerous. That is so dangerous. Because for most women that are following the body positivity movement, I'm not saying everyone, but I'm saying a large amount of the women, especially the younger people, they are sitting there thinking, oh, so it's just okay. I don't have to like get help. And I don't mean, again, it's not about weight loss. It's about, I don't need to get help. I don't need to like get therapy. I don't need to lose emotional weight. Because if I just love myself into believing everything's going to be okay, that's all that matters. And that's toxic. That is horrible. That is gaslighting. That is denial. That is, uh, <laughs> right? And so it just, it's like, I was watching, um, and I tend to watch this every so often, but I caught myself watching my 600-pound life the other day, and it blows my mind, okay? When you have someone who's six, seven hundred pounds overweight, that is not, I just overate a couple times. That is not someone who is just coming home, stress eating, emotional eating. That is someone who is extremely extremely traumatized by something. That is an extreme trauma response. And what absolutely infuriates me about that show, and now I don't know if they do this behind the scenes. I haven't looked into it that much, at least on the show. Do you ever see them referring the person, the patient, 
to therapy to fix the trauma, to fix the mental stuff. No. And that just infuriates me. And every single person, these poor people, when they come on the show, every single one of them has a traumatic story about how they got where they got. You don't get to five, six, seven hundred pounds by accident. You don't get there because everything is great. You don't get there because you're happy. <laughs> that is not called happy weight. That is not the same thing as falling in love, going into a relationship and going out to eat every night and putting on the 30 pounds. That is not the same thing. These people are extremely, extremely traumatized. And yes, the surgery is going to be life-saving because these people's bodies are going to fail. You cannot be that large and not expect physical consequences. And that's the other thing, too, with body positivity. They don't want to admit that at some point, obesity, it is a problem. And I've been overweight my entire life, guys. I get to speak on this, too, right? Like, and I, and I have experienced getting to a certain number and going, oh, this is actually affecting my health. Let's stop living in denial that that's a thing, too. So self-love is being able to say, listen, I love you enough to get you help. I love you enough to give you a better life. I love you enough to create a life you actually deserve. Because sitting around and eating and hiding behind your body and isolating at home, that's not a life. That's not a life. And so I love you enough to take better care of you. And taking care of you See, that's the difference between desperate dieting. Desperate dieting is I'm going to do anything at all costs to get the weight off. Self-love says I'm going to actually relearn or learn for the first time how to eat, how to portion control, how to live in moderation, how to move my body in ways that feel good. That's the difference. That is the difference. And I, you know, back to the 600-pound life stuff, um, those people need therapy. Those people, and I, and I, because you can lose, you're going to lose hundreds of pounds here. This is an extreme amount of weight. What do you think is going to happen when they do that? They still have to deal with what got them overweight in the first place. It's just like that show. I don't even know if it's on anymore because I despise it. Um, the Biggest Loser. I hate The Biggest Loser. I think it is toxic. I think it is awful. And I think it is contributing to the belief that all you have to do is lose weight and be amazing. No. There's a reason why these people are put into bubbles. They are put into literal weight loss workout bubbles where they are doing things that are so extreme, so drastic, and so unrealistic. And that is why they get off the show and they come back and they're overweight again. We have to start talking about the emotional toll that being overweight takes. We have to start talking about the depression, the anxiety, all the things that come with being overweight that have nothing to do with the physical stuff. And see, body positivity is never going to acknowledge those things because they think, just love yourself. No, you have to love yourself enough to say, you know what? I want to get you therapy. I want to make you feel better. I want to get out of this depression. I want to feel good in my skin again. I want to be able to put on a pair of clothes and feel good about myself and be able to walk down the street without dying. That's self-love. That's self-love. And so I want to say to you, you know, if you are one of those people who thought, well, I can just stay here forever. I'm okay. Even though I can't breathe, even though I can't touch my toes, even though I, I beat myself up on the regular, body positivity taught me to just love myself. Well, you're not loving yourself if those are the things that you're feeling. You're not loving yourself when you're in denial. Denial is not part of self-love. Let me put it to you this way. If you're in a relationship with someone and you know your partner is cheating on you, but you choose to turn the other way and stay in denial about what's really going on, but yet you're telling yourself, we're in love. This is a loving relationship. That's exactly what you're doing to yourself when it comes to this. You're letting yourself cheat on yourself and stay in denial. I even did like a little... Um, experiment, if you will. I don't know if that's a little dramatic, but I was Googling. I was like, you know what? I don't think, 
I can't speak for every, obviously every gastric bypass surgery or, you know, surgeon or, or, or that, but I was like, let me just Google weight loss surgery in my local area. Cause I wanted to see something I'm trying to, I'm trying to see something. And it was like, who is a candidate? This is, this is part of the problem guys. It's like, who is a candidate BMI when first and foremost, the BMI is this outdated, just it, it, it's so antiquated. It doesn't work. It's not, it's it. Ugh. Okay. We'll do a whole episode on that. Um, so it's like, who's a candidate. It goes on your BMI index. So if you're a 30 and above, you're considered obese, which again is ridiculous. Um, and then other eligibility requirements include, okay, no poorly controlled psychological conditions. So they're trying, but this is not it. This is, this is not it, boo. No drug or alcohol dependence, no smoking, um, and a personal lifelong commitment to follow the nutritional exercise, vitamin supplement, and lab protocols indicated by our program. No poorly controlled psychological conditions. And I guarantee you, generalized anxiety and depression are not lumped into that first category because they just want to get people in because they know that most people that are going in for gastric bypass surgery need a ton of therapy. They need to work on themselves. They need to work on their emotional weight. And this just infuriates me because this is what's going on. And then people wonder, well, I had the surgery and I feel the same. Well, yeah, because it just got rid of one thing. Of course you feel the same. <laughs> um, it's just, it's crazy, guys. It's absolutely crazy. And we have to change this. We have to change the conversation. So what I would leave you here to question is that if you do not feel good in your own skin, why? I want you to dig deeper. I want you to investigate that. I want you to, to, to ask yourself, what would be different if I lost the weight? What would be different if I had my stomach removed? What would be different if I had the mommy makeover? Why do I want these things? And, and to really start to question that and to figure out what's really going on and are you doing it from the right place? Are you doing it from the place of self-love or are you doing it out of desperation and wanting to fit into a certain type of thing? Or are you in denial that you do need to make changes? Are you in denial that you're not okay where you are right now, that you're not physically feeling good? And I know for me, when I was at my heaviest weight before I ever had kids, this was way back in the day, guys, when I was at my heaviest weight, I was in the biggest denial bubble you could ever imagine. I was winded walking around my college campus. My clothes did not fit. I had this pair of boots that wouldn't even zip up over my ankles, but yet I would rock those boots like nobody's business and I would rock them unzipped. And I was telling people, oh no, girl, this is the trend. This is it right here. That's how much denial I was in. I didn't have a period for almost a year. And it had everything to do with how rapidly I gained that weight because I was very young. It had everything to do with the extra weight. So I was living in this denial and I was in denial that I was even gaining that much weight. I gained almost a hundred pounds in less than a year. And I was in denial that it was happening. I would just tell myself, oh, I don't like wearing those denim shorts anymore. Oh, I don't like wearing my jeans anymore. I really like these stretchy pants. I really like these stretchy skirts. Remember when like those long stretchy skirts were a thing? Oh, I really like the stretchy skirts. I really like the stretchy pants. And I would just deny, deny. It was like I had such a disconnect between my body and myself. Like it was so, it was just so disconnected and so in denial about what was really happening. I remember for the first time in my life seeing these horrible, red, angry looking inflamed stretch marks. And I just threw my shirt back on and acted like it wasn't happening. I mean, it was such denial, such denial. Um, and living in denial like that. So if I was, you know, this is before the body positivity movement, this was the early 2000s. If I were to see the body positivity movement when I was that size and going through, and I had so much emotional stuff going on, that was the problem. 
because there's always something under the weight. The weight's a symptom. The weight is not the problem. The weight is a symptom of something else. And I had so much other emotional like stuff going on and changes and just things that were happening. And um, I just didn't want to admit any of it was, was, was real. And it's like, if I were to see the body positivity movement back then, it's like, well, just love yourself. Well, here's the deal. When you're going through that, you don't know how to love yourself because if you knew how to love yourself, you wouldn't be doing those things. Because loving yourself doesn't mean scarfing down and shoving all the food in your face. Loving yourself doesn't mean acting like your clothes, you don't like your clothes anymore because they don't fit. Loving yourself doesn't mean putting on the boots that don't zip. That's not loving yourself. So if I would have sat there and said, oh, just love myself. Well, how the fuck do I do that? Please explain to me how I do that. Tell yourself some, some positivity in the mirror. Oh, okay. That's really gonna, that's really gonna cure this shit. It's like, no, loving yourself means, are you okay? I need to have this conversation with myself. Like, are you okay? What's really going on here? Lo Self-love looks like therapy. Self-love looks like tough conversations. Self-love looks like having parameters in your life, boundaries in your life. All of those things are not glamorous. Those are the things nobody talks about. All of those things are what make up self-love. Yes, bath bombs and, and spa days and dates with yourself. Oh, yeah, okay, that is self-love, yes. But that's the superficial surface level bullshit. That's not all that self-love is. Self-love is reaching out and saying, I don't want to be alive anymore. I need help. That was me also at one point. That is self-love. Self-love doesn't mean you have the answers. I didn't have the answers. I didn't know how to love myself. I didn't know how to change. I didn't know how to have a, a, a craving for life again. But raising your hand and reaching out and telling someone, I need help. That's not easy. That is hard. And that is self-love. Um. So there's just so many layers to this stuff, guys. And I think we're going to break it down even more tomorrow during the um, live show, the after live show inside of the Facebook group. Please head over there. Let's talk about self-love as an evolution. What does it look like? What are some of the things that you're going to be working on? And let's just have a deeper di a deeper conversation around all of this because we got to get out of denial. Okay, that is all for this week. If this episode was helpful to you, please head over to um, Apple Podcasts and leave a rating and review. That would be amazing. It means the world to me. And I hope to see you inside of the Facebook Live. I hope to see you there tomorrow. Um, if you're watching this at a later time, please join the group. We have weekly discussions, and that is where we break down each episode and talk about it in more detail. And you can always catch the replay of those live shows as well. Thank you guys for listening. Have an amazing day. Stay irresistible. I love you. I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.